India, the Holy Land, the God's own country, considers cow as the mother. Cow has been the center of ancient Indian civilization from many millennia, a part and parcel of the society, a well-constituted progressive society. India, being colonized from centuries, did not lose its independence for the very reason that villages were self-sufficient and cows formed the most fundamental part of self-sufficient living. How then something so precious be foregone, something unimaginable and repercussions beyond calculations? This very feeling urged the well-known first war of Indian independence in 1857 also known as the Sepoy Mutiny. The Sepoys were asked to use cartridges made from slaughtered cow fat and what followed was a great revolt. This very issue united the whole India beyond religion, caste, creed and sex. Mahatma Gandhi led the nation to independence in 1947 based on non-violence. He said, a nation can be determined by the way it treats animals. Why is cow considered so important compared to any other animal? In the centuries-old cow economy of this country, nearly all basic necessities of life like farming and manure, food and nourishment, transportation, fuel, housing and medicine are woven around the pivotal cow. Milk is the first food a child takes to survive. It is to be the best and most complete of all foods, ideal food for infants and children, and a good supplementary food for adults. Similarly, other derivatives of cow milk, such as ghee, curd, and buttermilk, have unique properties and make a top-class food for humans. The cow milk is supposed to be ojaskara in Ayurveda. The cow milk is supposed to be ojaskara. What is ojas? Ojas is the subta, uh, dhatu sara. The sara of all the dhatus, of all the tissues is ojas. And uh, it is said that when oja is destroyed, the life is not, no more there. That means uh, it's so much life giving and cow milk is equivalent to ojas. Ahara shuddho. Ahara shuddho means your ahara. Uh, the food that you take has to be pure and that pure food is only possible the purest food is only possible and only possible if we have cows this first class food from cows cannot be replaced by milk of any other animal milk from the indigenous cows is therapeutically better it has got medicinal values it has got certain products certain constituents like Strontian, like uh, cerebrosides, like uh, small size fatty acid particles, which are very useful because the small size of the fat globules is good because that is the kind which will reach our brains to help us. The big sized fat globules from the buffalo milk are not as efficient to reach the human brains through our veins as the small sized from indigenous cattle are available and are able to support us in our thinking, in our working. India is set to live in its villages. The total area of India is 32.6 crore hectares. A population of over 1 billion is spread over this vast area. Of this, 82% is in approximately 7 lakh villages, with nearly half of these villages having less than 500 people. Agriculture is the mainstay of this country. What goes into agro-economy cannot be neglected and cows are the center of agrarian based living. For most of us cow means only milk whereas the terminology of cows includes cows, bulls and bullocks. She is considered to be the mother, 
the very reason that we take milk from her and bulls as the father the very reason it plows the land to feed us the fact that male buffaloes cannot be used for plowing is less known replacing the bulls with tractors is no solution too imagine if bulls were to be disengaged from farms how much more tractors need to be manufactured how much more oil has to be imported and all at what cost in a letter to C.V. Raman, Albert Einstein says, Tell the people of India that if they want to survive and show the world path to survive, then they should forget about tractors and preserve their ancient tradition of plowing. India today has nearly 40 crore acres under the crop. To switch this area over to mechanized farming, more than 5 million tractors will be required, against which we have today only a meager 31,000. To make these tractors, we will need 30 million metric tons of steel. Let's take the case of transportation. The fresh produce from the farm is transported from hundreds of interior villages to distribution centers across the subcontinent. 70% of your food today comes on bullock carts. If bullocks were not there in India today, God knows how much we would have to spend on importing petroleum products. Technology seems to surpass these transportation means, but certainly cannot take it out, though it is attempting to do so. Cow dung, unlike excreta of any other animal, can be used as fuel, medicine, building material and much more. Experts say there are over 101 uses of cow dung. It is considered to be the abode of wealth, a fundamental element of economy. If we were to use cow dung extensively, then energy needs can be met, traditional medicine can be revived, cheap fuel will be available to masses, food grains can be produced and made available at cheaper rates, fertilizers will be cheaply available to us, and soil will retain its fertility. Simply using cow dung as manure is what forms a fundamental part of the well-known organic farming. I do admit that the yield will be low to begin with and it will may not catch up with uh, the yield which you normally get with the chemical fertilizers but the production is sustainable and the soil condition will never deteriorate. So you can do the farming years after years and which is known as sustainable farming. So here it is a sustainable consumption, sustainable production and sustainable farming. And if we, that's why if we take care of all these factors and then put it through an integration, then it will be possible for doing the real kind of organic farming, which is in great demand not only in our country, but abroad also. In terms of energy conservation, cow dung saves us 35 million tons of coal, 68 million tons of fuel wood. In other words, nearly 140 million trees of 20 to 25 years old would require to be felled each year otherwise. Recent experiments show yet another use of cow dung in running vehicles. We at IIT Delhi developed the technology, patented the technology. Past three years we are producing a bio CNG running the car in the campus and outside IIT Delhi. Cow urine has been known to have medicinal benefits. In Sushrut Samhita, cow urine is considered to be elixir of life. It has all the essential elements that compensate for deficiency of nutrients in the human body. It plays an important role in curing diabetes, blood pressure, asthma and several other diseases. These unique properties of cow urine is tested and proved in the scientific world. Dr. Chauhan, whose team achieved US patent for bio-enhancer property of cow urine, explains. It has been established scientifically nowadays that urine of indigenous cows is enhancing the immunity of the body and thereby it is causing immunomodulatory effect and termed as universal vaccine. 
which can overcome any sort of the disease in the body including the cancer. It has already been patented against tuberculosis and anti-cancer properties. Cow is a song of pity. She gives everything and takes nothing in return. She seems to live for others and yet asks only for grass, a little land to go around. India, where more than 80% non-beef eaters reside, is now world's third largest exporter of cow meat. They are no more cared for, protected, nor utilized properly. With all the service they do to human race, they have only seen abuse, termed unproductive and slaughtered mercilessly, all in the name of economy. Today your whole economy is living on petroleum. In every aspect of your life, we have petroleum. Even the button that I'm wearing has petroleum. It's a petroleum byproduct. Mm -hmm. Everything that I that we have around us, the electricity, our clothes, our food has petroleum byproducts. So it is practically all pervading it today. So if we take away petroleum one of us, all of a sudden today away from our life, you can imagine what a collapse will take place. In the same manner, cows have their position or has their position in a natural system. Cows are the mainstay of our society. The day we are eliminating cows from our society, we are calling ourselves into a great economic danger, social danger and a political danger because we will become a 100% dependent nation. Cow gives us independence from such dependencies. What kind of economic policy is followed when a slaughtered cow fetches only 20,000 rupees while the same cow in its lifetime can provide income of 3 lakh rupees by way of milk, urine and dung. In fact, countries like Britain have stopped giving licenses to slaughterhouses, whereas India is on a sort of a spree to increase their number, which is, which is absolutely ridiculous. The value of the output from it would be around 3 lakhs which is equivalent to 20,000 each year. That means we are foregoing a profit of 2,80,000 rupees by just sending a cow to a slaughterhouse for earning foreign exchange. While the number of cattle population is decreasing rapidly, cows are dragged into slaughterhouses mercilessly. There is a lot of increase in the population of human beings and that has led to our urbanization because of this urbanization, the grazing lands of the cattle have been reduced, have been squeezed and now mostly these are not available or very little of them are available. Grazing lands have had a very good meaning because when the grazing lands are there, then the animals can even eat the herbs which go and these come out in the form of milk and then that goes into uh, our diet and that gives benefits to us. Now this combination has been broken by urbanization. With this scenario in front of us where the number is coming down and the rate of decrease in the number of indigenous population is also very high. It was 5% in the years 92 to 97 and this decrease was 10%. It was 5% earlier, but it was 10% in the next 5 years from 97 to 2002-03. And the next census is presently happening and we might see the figures which we are afraid might come more than 10% and if that is so, then we will be really uh, placed in a very odd situation of our indigenous breeds. Home for 120 indigenous breed of cows India is now watching the number coming down to 30 and all endangered. When you talk about the Pancha Gavyas, there are more Gavyas. Like for example, after the Kshira, Dadi, then Grutha, Gomutra, Gomaya, we have got a lot of other Gavyas like butter, buttermilk, Takra and then cream. A lot of other products are available of the cow. As a Ayurvedic Vaidya, if you ask me to practice Ayurveda without these products, it's not possible for me. It's not possible for me to advise the prevention of diseases without the Gavyas. The most 
the priority if you ask me what is the priority today the priority is to conserve all the breeds of india to do lot of investigations into their uh, qualities uh, to do lot of scientific research into how they are useful where to prove uh, how uh, it can be useful for the society this institute on cow science and technology is necessary to carry out the research on cow urine induced immunomodulation in human beings and animals to control the infections in next centuries see that unless such a change occurs and unless the ngos and the government moves towards reestablishing the cow in our culture uh, i am afraid we will not be a stable of uh, food security a country with stable food security history has told us any country which is strong can be so only if there is a food security trouble for these animals start uh, right before they are even slaughtered while they are transported wherever they are transported from they are transported mostly in trains for them to get till the city of destination they are transported in a train and uh, in a train compartment about 15 cows can actually be transported in one single compartment but about 40 of these animals are crammed into one single compartment and in this compartment to try to adjust into that space each of them keep moving here and there and they hurt each other with their horns and by the time they reach the destination they hurt each other to an extent where most of them cannot even move they are most of them cannot even walk by then and uh, at the time of destination where they have to be loaded into another uh, transportation like when they have to get into another lorry because they cannot move they take uh, some chili or they are either whipped to get up from that place or they they take some chili and they it's rubbed into their eyes or it is rubbed into their noses just so that they can move and they can put be put into the next uh, vehicle where they are again transported into those vehicles and they are taken from there into the slaughterhouse they transported to the next destination in which they are taken to another open space where again all the animals are crammed up with no space to stand or sit most of these animals are either beaten properly on their legs or whatever most of their legs are broken each of these animal that pathetic in state to look at most of them are bloodied in condition they are already bleeding and they are very very sad in a very sad state and by this time most of them are in such a shape they cannot even stand most of them are quite sadly in a state of they almost give up their life by then they are all in a state of silent uh, basically silent giving up their life this culture of slaughterhouse was foreign to india there was no slaughterhouse up until british came they started slaughterhouses wherever they set up a cantonment these slaughterhouses use the beef for meat and other extracts for various products that they manufacture such as cartridges with this very understanding freedom fighters sought after closure of slaughterhouses as the first agenda of the independent india in 1947 including mahatma gandhi most of the leaders based its movement on the ground of cow protection and assured the people of india assured the general public that as soon as swaraj is achieved we will ban the slaughter of cow particularly i will make a mention of mahatma gandhi who said that cow protection is most important to me than the independence itself the animals uh, are kept in this open space for about 4 days without food and f- without food and water and uh, within these 4 days they become almost useless and then there at this point their either their eyes are poked out or their legs are broken just so that a letter of uselessness can be given by the veterinarian because according to the government of india an animal in good health cannot be slaughtered so just so that they can get this letter their eyes are poked out or their legs are broken basically just to obtain this certificate and once that is done then the animal is taken in for slaughter the last place inside the slaughterhouse once the animal gets into the slaughterhouse 
the hot water sprayed onto the animal for about five minutes and the heat of this water is about 200 degrees five minutes of this spray the animal is not dead but it's faint it faints at this point this is done so that the skin on the animal becomes soft just so that this leather or the skin can be taken out easily from the from the body of the animal because the leather cells obviously and then the animal is hung upside down on a conveyor belt wherein it starts passing all this is done in full view of other animals actually even this is illegal an animal is supposed to be slaughtered separately when another animal cannot watch it but all this is in this is done in full view of other animals and all the other animals are viewing this entire thing in distress in fear now when this animal is uh, is hung upside down on a conveyor belt its throat is slit half just so that the blood starts dripping it cannot be slit completely because it cannot die completely the blood has to drip away completely from its body which will happen only if the animal is alive it should not die completely then the blood starts dripping and the animal starts moving slowly on the conveyor belt then a hole is made in its stomach on one side and air is pumped into its stomach so that the body of the animal is swollen and then the leather or the skin is removed peeled from the animal's body while it is still alive once again and then the animal is cut into four pieces head the legs and the body and the different parts and then this is how an animal is killed in a slaughterhouse and this is what happens in our slaughterhouses in a very very legal way which is actually extremely illegal but obviously we are not allowed entry into these slaughterhouses it's possibly easier to get into your parliament than to get into a slaughterhouse and by the time you get entry into a slaughterhouse all these things are well covered and obviously you don't get to see all these things each person in these slaughterhouses is paid a salary of about 50 to 75,000 and obviously you will not get to hear these horror stories from them because they are well paid to keep their mouth closed. Cow slaughter especially is not proposed, preached nor supported by any religion. In Christianity, commandments for life are described as definitive aphorisms. The seventh commandment says, Thou shalt not kill, indicating one should not kill, leave alone, eat meat. Buddhism and Jainism propagate non-violence as the highest religion, while in Islam it is said, He who takes pity even on a sparrow and spares its life, Allah will be merciful on him on the day of judgment. In a Hayatul Haiwan, an Islamic religious text, there are clear evidences against cow slaughter. قرآن کریم کے اندر کہیں پر بھی ایسا کوئی منشن نہیں ہے کہیں پر بھی ایسا ذکر نہیں ہے کہ گائیں کی قربانی جو ہے مسلمان کے لئے جائز ہے یا اس کی قربانی کرنی چاہیے اور نہ ہی کہیں پر بھی حضرت محمد نے ایسا کہا ہے سناتنا دھرما پاپیورلی نون از ہندویزم describes that there are seven mothers for a person and cow as one of the mother. This cow is a provider of all our necessities and therefore it has been said in the Vedas that the, all the demigods who provide us our necessities for our day-to-day -day livelihood are in the cows because through the cow we get all our livelihood in the best way, in the top class way. If we do not have top class food we cannot have top class people. The Supreme Court being cheesed off about this matter gave a historical judgment in 2005. Supreme Court in 2005, it was the golden day, I will say, it was the golden day in the history of Gomata after 47 years of litigation that the Supreme Court rendered a historical judgment upholding the ban on the slaughter of cow and its progeny. Supreme Court went on saying that this ban is in the interest of the public and the legislature which provides for it uh, is also right that it has got every right under Article 1948 to make legislation banning the uh, total slaughter of cow and its progeny that is bull and bullocks. Ultimately the solution lies in the fact that we must spread this message among the people, we must disseminate the information about the utility of the cow and its products 
then only the farmers will be ready to keep these animals maintain these animals in his own farm and will be able to save the cow and its progeny o raksha hum musalmano ke beech mein iska prachar prasar kar rahe hain aur pehli jo hamara rashtriya sammelan hua us rashtriya sammelan mein humne jo 31 31 august 2003 delhi mein hua उसमें जो हमने अलग अलग प्रस्ताव पास किए तो उसमें सबसे पहला प्रस्ताव हमने यही पास किया कि गौ की रक्षा होनी चाहिए और उसकी रक्षा करने के लिए कोई ऐसा कानून बने ये हम मुसलमानों ने ही उस प्रस्ताव को पास किया था हमारे आंदोलन के लोगों ने पास किया था इसके अतिरिक्त हम लगातार इसके ऊपर गौ रक्षा के ऊपर कार्य कर रहे हैं और आज हमारा उन्नीस राज्यों में हमारी संस्था जा चुकी है और उन्नीस राज्यों में लगातार हम इस कार्यक्रम को आगे बढ़ा रहे हैं लेट ऑल ऑफ अस टेक पार्ट एंड बिकम पार्ट ऑफ द सोल्यूशन हवेवर वॉट कुड बी मोर शॉकिंग इज दैट अन इंटेंशनली वी आर ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम द फर्स्ट वॉर ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस इन एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन वॉज ड्यू टू यूज ऑफ बी फैट इन कार्टेजेस टूडे your toothpaste toilet soap shaving cream and host of cosmetic and consumer products either contain gelatin pen tallow stearic acid and many more all derived from beef the good news is that alternatives are available mahatma gandhi stressed gram swaraj or village empowerment unless we have self sufficient locally governed and god conscious agrarian based communities the final solution will not come forth applying the principles of self sufficiency which is based on god conscious principles which includes the presence very much of realized individuals such as brahmanas and which has at the center and as a beginning focal point the protection of cows there is there is no way that society can be properly organized and there is no solution each one of us need to take part in making such farm communities if sanity still has its place in this sacred country then what is needed to realize that it is the 11th hour and our left to come together and lay down road map for recovery and our to gain true independence let us save our cows to save ourselves our planet